hello my beautiful friends on the internet how you are doing so today we'll be looking at something amazing today's video is going to be about event channels in flutter so in case you don't know flutter actually has three channels i believe and one is the platform channel the platform channel enables you to evoke invoke uh functions from the native side like function that you write with either kotlin java swift or objective c so using the platform channel you'll be able to call this function and then whatever you want to do you can do it then the display it on your flutter application i actually created a video on that previously so i'll put the link in the description below so the second one is the event channel which is actually what we are going to be looking at today basically the event channel is used if you want to listen to a stream of events let's say you have some you're trying to create a sensor application and uh, you want to connect it you want to write the code with kotlin and then call it inside flutter you use the event channel if you try to use the platform channel it's not going to work because using sensor it needs you need to listen to this stuff whenever there's a change so using event channel you'll be able to achieve that so basically in this video what we are going to be creating i'm going to show you how to use the event channel and we'll be creating a we'll be using the sensor which is magnetic fit sensor yeah to read magnetic data i believe and uh, i'll be using a physical device for this so i also urge you to use a physical device and then at the end of this we will we'll create a compass application so i'm going to write the code the platform code in the the native code using in flutter in, sorry in with uh, with kotlin and then i'm going to call that using stream just to listen for the events and then in the flutter app i'm going to display the data from the x y and z axis and then we'll be using the x and y axis to create the compass all right so we're going to know the, which direction is north which direction is east west and south all right and the last one is actually i do forget the name but it's like an event message so i haven't really looked into that but i believe after this video i should be i will just go through and then maybe once i'm done with it i'm going to get, uh, make a tutorial on that so without much ado let's get started so here i have my android studio i'm going to create a new flutter project and uh, select application so we can name this let me just call it event channel okay and we can nest all right so we can leave this as it is so we include kotlin and swift all right and we'll finish so just wait for flutter to create the project i believe i'm just going to skip this part all right guys so the app is up and so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to create a simple ui okay that will just display the ui is going to have the compass yeah the compass image so i'll just i'm just going to go to my okay change this to uh, projects i believe yeah collapse this and i'm going to go to my um, the root directory so let me just open this with with the time let me just open it in uh, showing files okay so uh, you want to go back okay right here i'm going to create an asset folder so i'm going to store the image inside the assets folder and right now we don't have any image i believe i'm just going to look for one inside my okay so i have one which is a compass.png so you can see it's like a compass yeah it's a compass image so i just put it inside my asset folder yeah the asset i created here all right so we can close this and go back to your flutter app i should have the asset here all right so i'm going to create go back to go to my prospect yaml file to create a path so i'm going to just going to link that and uh, okay this asset you want to comment this and so i'll just get rid of this and replace it with assets okay i think we are good so now run pop the pop get all right so make sure you move this back a little let it be the same line with this okay with the ash that is a comment 
all right so we are done with this you can run pop get again and i can close this now so what i'm going to do now is just get rid of all this stuff and uh, import the material app okay so i'll create a void uh a predefined function here so i believe you should know about this Here I'm just going to return a scaffold, and the scaffold is going to have an app bar. So just give it an app bar. And I'll just return a center widget here, and then I'm going to return a child which is going to be image.assets and then i will specify the parts to this asset which is assets slash compass dot png all right so once you're done with that okay my app i'll change this to event app oh sorry my app i'll just create a st stateless widget here and that is going to have my app and then I will create a material app and the material app will have the home to be the event channel yeah okay I think we are done with that so now I'm going to run the app so I'm going to show you how this stuff is going to display so I'll run it now I believe I'm just going to skip this part okay I will skip this part and then show you the final output but first let me bring up my emulator and remember i'm using a physical device so this is my physical device so i'm just going to wait for this to build okay so now we have the app so this is the image i just added and you can see it has the look of uh, it has a look of a a compass north east south and west so right now if i cheat the phone you can see there is no changes no you cannot see how i'm teaching it but i'm actually teaching my physical device i'm shaking it you can see there's no changes so now we are going to proceed to adding the the magnetometer that is the magnetic feed and using the the event channel in from kotlin side so i'm going to exit that and the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to go to android and just right click on this android folder okay right click on it so you should bring down this drop down you select flutter and then open android module in android studio all right so we're going to make this to be a new window and just wait for android studio to build to show the android module in a separate window all right all right so everything is done now now we have our app folder and uh, okay i don't think this is the place i'll just change this to from android to projects okay so you can collapse this all right so we have this app folder and from the app we have the source we have the main we have kotlin we have android and i have my package name event channel so this is where we're going to do all the work so i'm not going to create any additional class so that I'm, i just want to make this stuff simple so i'm not going to create any additional class we are going, just going to do everything inside this main activity okay so right now you can see just an empty empty file okay close this it's just an empty file with the main activity which extends uh the flutter activity okay so i'm going to is it extend or implement okay so i'm going to this at uh, the main activity extend flutter activity so what i'm going to do now i'm going to extend two classes one is for the the sensor event listener the other one is for event channel stream handler okay but before i do that i'm going to create some variables first so the first variable is going to be i'm going to use private late in Inva. so if you are coming from android background you should be familiar with this 
form of you should be familiar with this so i'm going to create a new sensor manager here so this is going to take the sensor manager class okay all right so we don't we need to import this and all right so i'm going to create a, another one again which is for the sensor so i'm just going to create a var okay so this is going to be magnetic okay magnetic sensor no okay so this is going to be magnetic sensor and by default i want it to be null so just uh, import the sensor okay i think sensor should be imported here okay i want us to okay so it's not showing let's just initialize it i believe we should get what we want okay so we should be private var that's why it's not showing so private var and now we need to import this so click alt enter if you're on windows if you're on linux sorry so now we have that imported and then the next thing i'm going to create is a channel remember why creating assuming if you have done platform channel already you realize we have this unique channel name that we used to like we use it in flutter side and also use it in native side so it's always the same names so in case you are not aware of that just i recommend i'm going to put the description to my platform channel video down below so you're going to watch that and get some experience of how it's been implemented and then this one will just be an easy flow but anyways you can still learn from this one too and so i'm going to create a channel so i'll name this with an uppercase and the channel is going to be unique so I'll, i like using my package name so i'll just select my package name here because i want it to be unique okay and uh, and uh, so i will close this so this unique name is i you use this this channel in case you're creating more than one uh sensor list listener like you're creating more than one event listener inside the same class you use the channel and then the channel will just distinguish them from each other so the next thing i'm going to do is to create a override function which is the config configure flutter engine so if you're coming from android background this configure flutter engine just serves as on create in android yeah on create where you just initialize all your all your variables so the same thing that this one is also doing configure flutter engine so you can see use on create but i don't think it works anything here compared to when you're creating a pure native android application so i just i like using the configure flutter engine because it just gives me what i want so the first thing i'm going to do is to initialize the sensor manager yeah i'm going to initialize the sensor manager and it's going to be get system service and we'll call contest dot sensor sensor service okay and i'll call this as sensor manager all right so you should be aware of this when you're trying to create every many services in flow in android then the next thing i'm going to uh, initialize the magnetic sensor so this is going to be sensor manager dot get default sensor all right so i'm going to get the default sensor now i want to use which is sensor manager dot uh, uh not sensor manager sorry sensor okay dots and i should have type magnetic feed you can see there are so many and uh, sensor you can work with step counter so I normally use for this exercise app if you want to count your steps how many steps you've worked so far and also have type accelerometer proximity and we have gravity gyroscope your heartbeat heart rate and the rest of them so in this situation i'm just going to work with magnetic feed and then i'm going to create um okay i think that is the only thing it takes then the next thing i'm going to do is to create an event so i'm just going to create a simple event here just like a variable to to initialize the event channel okay so we have event channel okay 
just the way we have platform channel when trying to initialize it so i recommend you watch my other video to get uh to just uh, understand all this stuff better then what i'm going to do now is to use the flutter engine so it's actually coming from this this argument here flutter engine dot that executable dot binary i believe yeah binary messenger and then now i'm going to pass the channel all right so it's basically this channel i created here which is this one okay then once that is done i'm going to uh initialize the the set stream handler so it's just going to be like event dot set stream handler and i will call this this all right but right now this stuff is not going to work because we have not yet implemented the the classes that should uh which we handle this uh set stream handler so what i'm going to do i'm going to create i'm going to uh, create implement the classes yeah is implement or extend but whatever so i'm going to first one is sensor event listener so this one will help us to get the the on sensor changed callback and also the on sensor chain on sensor accuracy so the on sensor change is like it returning it returns a stream of events so since you're working with magne magnetic sensor it returns the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis okay so right now you can see it wants us to implement the members right so we need to implement members but right now moon to implement the members first or i can just implement this one for now okay so you can see we have the on sensor change and on accuracy change okay so basically i don't really use this i don't really use this on accuracy change so i will just put the comment here which is do nothing so we are only going to work with this on some sensor change but this thing is still showing red error because we also need to implement the event handler okay so to do that we're going to say event channel dot stream handler all right and this is gone so now we have everything sorted out and you also need to implement the members for this which is on listing and on cancel okay so i'm going to implement the members on listing and on cancel all right so now we have three callbacks uh, on sensor change on accuracy change on listing so this we call whenever the sensor is whenever the flutter is listening we are going to call this method and this on cancel whenever the flutter side cancels we are going to call this one so basically this on sensor change is not controlled by flutter side so it just um, just the sensor itself which is the magnetic sensor so it just be triggering uh, giving us the sensor whenever it changes all right so now the next thing i'm going to do is to i'm going to create uh yeah i'm going to create two functions so the first function is to register i'm going to re register the sensor manager so this will just handle it you should just handle register sensor manager and this one will be on register sensor okay so this method is going to call whenever we cancel and this other one is going to call whenever we're listing all right so let's do that real quick and the function is going to be uh let's say did i create an event I need to create an event sync so that this one will help us to once the sensor changes we can then sync uh we can then call stream dot add yeah to add the sensor that change the values and then we get it from the flutter side so what i'm going to do is just create a private variable and this is going to be event sync okay and uh, so if you are coming from Flutter, you should be if you have worked with Stream Builder before, you should be able to like Stream Builder, yeah, or WebSocket. You know what stream stream means. So it just gets the data, and then sync is used to add the data to the WebSocket. 
and I can call event sync and just set it to null for now. Okay, I uh, shouldn't be getting that error. Okay, all things are good. Okay, so now I'm going to create the register sensor manager. I'm going to create a function to handle that. And it's going to be a private function. And register. You're going to register sensor. Okay, so here I'll use some conditional statements. So if the stream sync, which is the event sync I just created, and which is this. So if this event sync is equal to null, then we can just return return sensor. Yep, uh, magnetic sensor. Sorry, that's the name, which is this uh, magnetic sensor. So I can just copy it and come down here. Okay, let me go up a little. Equal to, and I can call the sensor manager and make sure you make it nullable dot get default sensor so here i'm also going to do the same thing i did here which is getting the default sensor and uh, sensor type dot this so just copy this and i'm going to replace it with this so it's still similar stuff so you don't need to keep writing the same thing so we just call this as Okay, I don't think that is necessary. Return magnetic sensor, sensor manager, get default sensor, sensor.type. Okay, I don't know why this is doing like this. Okay, let me try this method. Uh, Okay, return, right, okay, okay, okay. So if the event sync is equal to null, just return. But if it's not, then we can then return the magneti magnetic sensor and we can just return this. And then once we return that, we can then initialize and we can then register the listener, which is event sensor manager dot register listener. And then the listener takes some callback. So the first one is this. And it takes the sensor like an integer. So I'm going to pass the sensor I just initialized, which is magnetic sensor. Okay. And then I'll pass sensor. So this one now is the sampling period. So I'll just say sensor manager dot uh, sensor delay normal. No, let me use UI. Okay. So this one will not overwork the UI. Okay. So now. This register sensor is going to call whenever the flutter end is listening to this event. So we're going to call this on event on listing from the on listing callback. So what I'm going to do, I will set the event sync, okay, equal to this event, right? So we're just going to initialize it here. And then I'm going to call the function, which is register sensor, all right? And then next, I'm going to create another function to unregister the sensor. So whenever we call on cancel, we're just going to unregister the sensor. So I'm still going to do the same thing by creating a private function. So this is going to be unregister. Okay. And then I'll just check for if statement, if condition. So if event sync equal to null so i can just return this but if it's not then we can unregister the sensor okay sensor manager dot unregister listener and then just call your this callback okay so i'm going to call this inside on cancel so the on cancel callback is just going to unregister the listener and then once we unregister i can set the event sync to be null all right so now we have this one set up so the next thing now is to actually listen to the sensor change so whenever the sensor changes we listen whenever it does the next thing we just do no make it so what i'm going to do now is to create 
inside the uncensor change i'm going remember i showed you that i'm not going to do anything inside on accuracy change so inside the uncensor change i'm going to get the value from the x i'm going to get the x y and z value okay so to get okay i'm going to show you that let's just proceed so first thing first i'm going to check if the sensor we are trying to list in is of type magnetic field okay but if it's not then we're not going to do anything remember the type here is type magnetic field so basically i'm going to say event dot sensor is this sensor yeah sensor dot type so if it's equal to yeah double equal to one let's try double okay if it's equal to sensor dot type magnetic magnetic field then we can do whatever we want to do but assuming you are creating accelerometer you just change this to sensor or type accelerometer or proximity whatever you want but if you have more than two sensor you can still do another if statement to get that for accelerometer and gyroscope or whatever sensor you're using so here i'm going to get all the values so far so the values i'm going to get uh it as a list so the kotlin collection so this is going to be the list of so it's going to be event basically a type of double so the first one i'm going to get is the events dot values and uh, so the zero now represents the value of x axis okay and then the one represent value in y axis and z value in z axis when i went through the documentation of type magnetic field i realized we only have three values to use which is the x y and z values but if you are trying to get the one without because this one i'm trying i'm doing now i'm getting also the force of gravity on the magnetic field but if you want to get one without force of gravity i think is in the android documentation i'm going to put the link in the description below and you can go check it out so i'm going to get the the value for the y axis and then also get the value for the z axis okay and once i get this i'm going to call the event okay event dot sync and uh, so on sensor change i'll say event dot sync uh, dot sources okay it has error the same thing we have in uh the same thing we also we have in when why using um platform channel it's just that the platform channel does not have this end of stream it has on implemented okay so i just say sources and the sources i'm going to pass in this value so it takes the value any type of value so i'm going to pass this value and i think we are done with this part so the first thing i did was to create the sensor manager magnetic sensor event sync for actually sending the sync to the flutter side and a unique channel so we also need this channel to to work with it in the flutter end and then we have the um configure flutter engine and uh, we also have okay i created a function uh an override function configure flutter engine this works like on create in your native app so we just initialize all the variables and then on sensor change just listening to the once the the magnetic feed changes we just keep listening to it then on, on accuracy change i don't like i don't i've never used any value here so i just set it to do nothing and on listing will be called whenever flutter is listening to this channel which is this channel okay and uh, on cancel so this register sensor is just a function i created remember you can still create this stuff you can just copy it and put it directly inside here if you don't want to create a function but just create a function for simplicity and clarity all right so i think we are done with the main activity the next thing i'm going to do is to go back to okay my flutter app so this is my flutter parts okay i'm just going to collapse this all right so this in my lib folder I believe so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new dart file so i'm just going to name this the listener so this is just going to list in to the platform channel and once it gets the data we're going to call it from the main activity okay so now let's continue so the first next thing i'm going to do is to create first thing first i need to import services or that can be imported on its own so i don't need to stress myself over that 
but what I need to do now is to go back here and copy this channel. Remember, this is the unique channel name. So I'm going to copy this. Make sure is this. Oh, okay. There's no semicolon in Kotlin. I right? like doing this because I've been using that for a long time. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to create a constant variable. So this is just going to be the of type event channel. Okay, event channel, and I'm call. I'm going to call this the channel, so which is the name, and uh, you can initialize event channel, and then I'll put in the name. So we just pass the name here. Oops. Okay, so I think I'm having error, and what is the error? okay and I don't know why that error is showing I don't know why the error is showing I don't know uh, okay so maybe I will just type that again Uh, event channel and it's gonna be event event channel and there are two two of them I believe is this one so I'm just gonna remove this I don't think it's this okay so just remove that yeah it's coming from services not event channel so I'm going to okay add this include this here and make sure you close it as well and i should have only one quote all right so now i can specify wow okay all right so now i can specify the channel without any error all right okay so i'm going to create a class so this is just like a data class and i believe you should be familiar with data classes in in flutter so i'm just going to call this event channel class okay just like event channel listener uh, yeah we can just call it event channel class or event channel data so this will help us to receive the data and then use it on our ui so what i'm going to do now is just it's a normal class remember and i'm going to create a list of constructors so the first constructor is going to be the three constructors i'm going to create are all doubles one for x y and z axis because from the flutter side this val from the android side this value is being passed here these events they are all of type values okay they are all of type double you can see list of floats all right so i'm going to do yeah i'm going to create the first one for x axis so I'm going to get that for x axis, which is the final double, and this is going to be x, and again on that one for y axis. Okay, and uh, this one, which is the last one for z axis, and we're going to get double z. All right, so now I'm going to create the constructor for them for all of them okay and uh, okay you can just create a double here so this will just return okay just call get z you're just going to return the value on z axis and uh, let's see z dot okay this dot z and then i'll create the main pass the constructor here so event data event channel data so this is going to be uh, okay so this dot x this dot y and this dot z all right so the errors are gone 
and then this same thing I did here, I'm going to create a simple override function. Override. Uh, so we have a string of, so I'm just going to convert this to string that we return the, okay, it's going to return the event channel uh, in form of a list. So just, uh, all right terminate it there okay so now i'm going to create a method uh it's going to be the event of type it's going to have the type event channel data okay that's just going to return the data for us which are this data for us whenever we get it so i'm going to create or uh, before i create that let me first of all uh, use the let me first of all get the data from the Android side. So I'm going to listen to it first. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a stream. So the stream is going to be of type. So it's going to return the type event channel that. All right, uh, stream event data type, and I can say list. So this is just going to be like get the uh, event data so we're going to get the event data so this is actually the class we're going to be called this is actually the function we're going to call whenever we want to implement it in our ui okay so events i'm going to that's the name event data and now i'm going to use some conditional statement but before i do that conditional statement i'm going to create a stream another stream and then inside the conditional statement i'm going to initialize it so i'm just going to create a stream a stream of uh, the events is of type event channel data and then I'm going to uh, the name is going to be magnetic events okay magnetic events right okay so now the next thing I'm going to create also is a magnetic I'm going to create another uh, list list of magnetic events so this one is just going to get all the values from the it's going to get all the values and then we're now going to return those values so that we'll be able to use it in our main dot that to display to show the compass all right so i'm just going to create the type is going to be of type event channel data and i'll call this list of channel list of event values or let's say list of values okay and uh, is of type so i'm just going to create a constructor uh, sorry a parameter so is of type list double so we have the data there and then here i can now return the event data event channel data x y and z axis so the first one is going to be data which is zero so you can see it's the same thing as this one where we are returning the event dot value zero for x axis y axis and z axis all right so i'll do the same thing here all right so this one data for x axis and then we get for y axis and z axis and they are of type double all right so get for y axis and also get for z axis okay all right i think we are done with that so now let me use my conditional statement to check so if the uh, magnetic event is null so if the magnetic event is null we can just uh, okay initialize it magnetic event equal to event data okay not event data magnetic event equal to okay the channel okay this is the channel all right so the channel must be the same with this one we are using here. So from here, we should actually know where we are get. It should be the same with this one. So assuming you have used platform channel, you'll be able to understand better what I'm trying to do. Okay. So that's how I'm going to put the link to my platform channel video in the description below for you to check it out. So if it was a uh, platform channel, now once you call your channel dot invoke method, you're going to invoke the method. But this one we are actually working with uh, stream so i'm going to use receive broadcast stream and uh, dot map 
and once you map this event is of type dynamic if you hover on it you will see it's of type dynamic then here now that is returning now we are going to return this list of values okay so we done list of values and we have events dot cast and we have the double okay so it's going to cast all the data all right and now these data we can make use of it so now what i'm going to do outside the is statement i'm going to return the magnetic event all right so we are done with this part and this video is getting longer but i will try my best to complete it as soon as i can all right so now we have the we, once we call this event data it's going to return the magnetic event which is the event that is being listened to from the side so it's going to get all these values once we call on listing it's called event sync equals to event and then on sensor change is going to add the values then the event sync is going to return these values for us for x y and z axis okay so going back to the code i think we are done with this part so the next thing i'm going to go back to my main dot that and the first thing i'm going to create is so this is actually where we're going to show the compass but first let me just use a stream controller stream stream subscription so this is just to listen to the event so stream subscription i will call it stream subscription and then i'm also going to create a, a list of double so this is going to, just going to get the values of the sensor so we're just going to call it sensor values okay it's going to get the values in x y and z axis all right so right now i also need to initialize this okay inside the init callback all right okay so i need to initialize the sensor values and i'm going to call it double okay so it must not be null and then i'm going to initialize the stream subscription all right and i'm going to call stream subscription equal to this event data remember this event data is a function with stream all right so we're going to call event data event data uh, dot listing i believe okay it has listing and then right here now we have this event and the event is of type events channel data which is this class we created here yeah this class okay this data class all right so i'm going to set state and uh, i will set the sensor values to be equal to the okay what am i setting it to let's see a double i believe okay and uh, the first one is for the event.x for the x value and then event dot y and then we also have finally event dot z okay save this up and let's try to run this app again to see if you're going to get the stuff okay i need to print this stuff out so that we're going to see the values so let me print sensor values okay so let's run this do a hot restart okay let me bring my device up okay and uh, run it is it running okay it's actually running let me check okay now you can see the values are changing this is the value for the x axis this is the value for the y axis this is the value for the z axis so all these values are changing with time whenever we the sensor change whenever this is called Whenever this is called this on listing, it will now listing to the sensor changed, and then the sensor change will now return the event, the values for us. And once we get the values, and we're now going to display it here, and you can see the values are all printing out. All right, so now with that much ado, let's get to the final part, which is to show the compass. Right now, you can see this compass is not moving, it's not acting as if it has life. So let's put life inside of it. So what I'm going to do first thing first is to okay I will import a mat so we need mat for this so I'm just going to import mat as mat okay and uh, I'm going to wrap this child with this image with 
transform the rotate property so that it uh, transform the rotate widget so that it will help us to transform this and rotate it and okay so this transform the rotate has a value of true it has an angle as a constructor so now i'm not going to pass anything inside the angle so what i'm going to do first is to create a double variable and it's going to be tan okay let's just call it tan and uh, or let's just call it angle value okay equal to math dot okay math dot eight and two so it takes two um positional arguments which is num a and num b so the first one i'm going to pass is from this sensor value so just copy that okay and sensor value then we pass i'm going to reverse it so x y we come first before x so i'm going to pass y which is one and x which is zero all right so we have it like this i'm just reversing it so we're going to get a proper uh compass okay so now i'm going to go here now i'm going to do maths dot pi so pi is around 22 over 7 if you divide that it should give you 3.14 i believe okay we divide it by 2 and then minus it by the angle that we got okay and i believe this should give us what we want so let's run this real quick okay and let me bring up my app and you should see this should take its position as soon as all right so now we have east so currently my device is let me see okay currently i'm facing east so let me see if i'll face north okay it's actually rotating okay so i'm facing north right now and uh, okay i'm facing east and south so let's see if this compass is actually working as expected let's try off i have a compass application here okay so i have this compass app is made it came with my phone so you can see it's though this one looks more advanced compared to ours <laughs> but it doesn't matter it's just something we are practicing how to do so you can see the position the direction of east so let's see if it's the same thing with our own app and the direction of east is completely the same thing all right so let's check this one again they are the same thing you can see all right and if you shake it is actually changing and uh, same thing with ours if you change it is actually changing as well okay all right guys so this is how you use flutter event channel to come to 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 listen to stream of events coming from the native platform and so far we ended up creating a compass application using that uh, event channel we used using the magnetic feed sensor to do this all right guys so please don't forget to like share and also subscribe i'll see you in my next video thank you